What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel for a video all about translations of the Bible. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why we even needed to translate the Bible in the first place, how like a basic overview of how the Bible was translated over the ages, and then a little bit from my personal philosophy about how I picked the translations that I read the Bible from and study from and any advice I might offer to you on the same kind of like if you're trying to pick which Bible you're going to buy if you don't have a Bible or you're needing a new Bible or something like that. So that's what this video is all about. And let's just go ahead and get into it. So basically, why do we even need a translation of the Bible? The basic answer is that the original Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament were written in three languages that are not English. So it was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, just a tiny amount of the Bible was written in Aramaic, some parts of Daniel, but some of it was, and then Greek, the New Testament is in Greek. Basically the Bible translators took all the manuscripts like the original language manuscripts of these different portions of scripture. And like, for instance, the New Testament, there's over 5,000 Greek manuscripts that are, you know, the New Testament. So they take, for example, the 5,000 Greek manuscripts and they look for any variants in the text. So basically these monks and different, you know, people within the church and, you know, like a thousand, 1500, long, long, long time ago, they were copying by hand because we didn't have a printing press. Sometimes when you hand copy stuff, there's a few like little, you know, like, one letter could be off and it could change a word or the plurality or the singularity and just different things like that, the grammar. So these translators, they took these texts and they worked hard and they studied and they made decisions about how to translate it best into English. Now translators have three different, you know, basic types of translations that they choose to go with, which is formal equivalence, which means it's a word for word translation. They translate word for word for word. If it says an ephah of barley, for example, that's a measurement back in the day, they say an ephah of barley in English. If um, it doesn't quite make sense grammatically, like coals of fire, what does that mean? Well, it basically means a burning coal, but an, a formal equivalence, like a word for word translator is going to say coals of fire instead of burning coals. Some examples of formal equivalence or word for word literal translations of the Bible would be the King James Version, New King James Version, NASB. Those are some examples. Now people will criticize the King James Version. One, they'll say, oh, it's got beautiful poetic language, and it does, but they used later manuscripts, and so there's this big debate about whether or not it's really, really, you know, like the most accurate. And I want to jump in here and say this. When people talk about accuracy, I want to make it very clear to you that these translations of the Bible, when I say that there is a textual variant or something in the text, and they're trying, the translators are trying to make a decision about which way to go, singular or plural, for example, with a word. It's not that these little tiny, like a singular or a plural does not make a doctrinal difference. It's not a deal breaker difference. It's not going to change the entire meaning of the passage. So overall, when you're picking a translation of the Bible, I'll get into that philosophy stuff at the end. But overall, you're not going to pick a Bible that's going to like lead you astray from the truth of the word of God. But anyway, the next type of translation style is called functional equivalence. Just think about what that means. Functional. It functions. It just makes sense. And equivalence, you know, equivalence like this word equals this word. So a functional, easy to understand equivalence. Basically, this is where translators are trying to translate the idea of the sentence instead of going literal word for word for word. They're trying to put it into the grammar that an English speaker would use. They're trying to give you the main thought of the point that's being made. And if it says like one ephah of barley, which is a really like ancient measurement, they might go with like a liter of barley or something like that. You'd be more familiar with what one liter is instead of one ephah. And I'm not saying those are equal, but you get the idea. So functional equivalence, you know, it just makes sense. Some people will call this a dynamic translation. Some examples of the functional equivalence type of translation would be the NIV. And then leaning a little more into the next type would be the NLT, which is my personal favorite. That's the New Living Translation. I love reading the Bible out of the New Living Translation. The third type of translation is called free translation. Also, it includes the whole category of paraphrases. Free translations are even more, they're like functional equivalents on steroid. That means they are into like kind of amplifying what it means, making it like, you know, in in line with like modern day you know concepts and ideas instead of saying lamp they might say something like a flashlight or a lantern and um 
I'm really wary of these. These include like the message is a free translation, the living Bible. It's different from new living translation, the living Bible, the passion. Uh, I think it's called the passion translation. It's newer, but those are more free translations or paraphrases and they have their place. But, um, I heard a guy, he was talking about Bible translations once and he said that the best piece of advice he could give people who are wondering about free translations is that they should treat you know, they should treat the message as more of like a great biblical commentary. A commentary is like, like helping you to understand what each verse in the Bible means. But it's, I really don't think that the message is true enough to uh, more of a literal translation or even that, you know, functional equivalence translation where it's really, those are, those are closer to the actual meaning of the word and then i would look at the message or the passion bible as a way to kind of like get you thinking about what the word is trying to tell us and help us to understand so those are the three types of translation styles i hope that was interesting for you i wanted to go into some of my philosophy i already told you my favorite translation of the bible to read is the new living translation it's easy to understand if you're a new christian and you're like where like how do I pick a translation of the Bible? Okay, the New Living Translation is what I suggest for new Christians, and I've been a Christian for over 25 years, and I read from the New Living Translation. It's easy to understand, it's easy to read, it makes sense, it's, um, they, they do a good job of converting like measurements and units into things that kind of make it where you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's just a good overall peaceful, easy to understand translation of the Bible and I really, really highly recommend it. And then I wanted to say that my philosophy on picking a translation of the Bible overall is this. You do not need to stress out. You do not need to listen. You will hear these hysteria people saying, the NIV is corrupted. It's not accurate, da, da, da. And they will go hardcore against the NIV. Or you'll hear these people who go hardcore against the King James Version of the Bible. Or they are like diehard, King James Version of the Bible is the only version for me. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with having your favorite version of the Bible. But my advice to you is don't become like so stiff necked about it just like there are certain things like the Jehovah's Witness they have a translation of the Bible and you need to not have anything to do with it because it's actually they are changing the meanings of things to fit their theology which is a big fat problem but there are most of the the common translations you're gonna find at your local Christian bookstore or if you search Bibles on Amazon if you're looking at the NIV or the ESV or the you know the NLT like I like or King James Version New King James, New King James Version Amplified Bible even the message things like that you're not gonna like I don't think you're gonna get doctrinally off and what do I mean by doctrinally off I don't think you're gonna miss the message of the gospel that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior that salvation is through him alone that Jesus he was born of a virgin he lived a sinless life he died on the cross he rose from the dead that we you know the basic truths of the gospel you're not gonna get off if you're reading the King James Version New King James Version New International Version New Living Translation you're not gonna get off by reading those so don't stress out too much but if you wanted to know more about about like the whole background of Bible translations. I get that question so much here on my channel. So many people say, what version of the Bible do you read out of? Or what's your favorite version? Or what version do you suggest for a new Christian? This video was just to kind of give you a brief introduction to, you know, translations of the Bible and how that works and why it matters and does it matter and is it a deal breaker and all that kind of stuff. So if you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. I'm very open to feedback, but um, yeah, I will see you guys later on this week with the Friday devotion video for the continue devotion that's my devotional magazine um, that is over on patreon and then I will also have a video on three or four things for you themes for you to read for as you're reading through the gospel of mark because we're doing the read with Anna Bible reading plan where we're reading through the New Testament this summer together it's been awesome over on Twitter I love talking with Liz and with Carly Carly's been like sending me pictures of her journal um, journal question prompt journal prompt answers responses and i have been getting to know her so much more and it's just been really fun and so anyway i've been enjoying all that thank you so much for watching this video and i will talk to you in another video soon okay bye